What's up, everybody? Welcome to Q Points, the mobile DJ podcast. My name is Anthony. Alongside me is co-host Will. What's going on, man? Busy week. Busy Dude, week. Woo. Crazy week, man. I'm just I'm all over the place. I'm, if I'm not sleeping, I'm packing trucks. If I'm not packing trucks, I'm, I'm sleeping because I got to pack another <laughs> truck. It's been it's been quite the while. Got a lot going on. Yeah, man. We're in the we're in the heat of communion season now, so it's just. It's and it's been such an interesting booking season as far as I've, I've as far as I've seen. I've talked to a couple of the DJs, and usually, and what I found out actually from the churches is a lot of them have extended communion season. So normally, what I've always found is that the first two weeks of May are like super insane, but now my busiest day is the third Saturday of the month, which is so weird. It's never. It's usually the second two are like. They're not slow, but they're just not as busy as the first two. And now it's like just everything's busy. Yeah. So, and I think it's really making up because another thing I talked about with people is that March was a little slower this year, and April was like okay, but May seems to be doing very well. Definitely. So, and I agree also with we that. have a lot of the colleges again, you know, are going to be having their commencements now. So we have a lot of college events, and it's just one thing after another, man. How about you? Uh, been keeping busy. Uh, I have a lot going on this month with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Leading Arts has a few things going on this month. So Hell yeah, that's what I want to hear. Everything is just rolling. Dude, that's what I want to hear, man. And, and speaking of rolling, you know, I figured on this show what we should talk about is, you know, we our aspect of what we do as mobile DJs is we're mobile. We're always on the move. And, you know, we carry a lot of crap with us. That much so, is true. So, <laughs> you know, I think it'd be great to go over different types of vehicles that really work for different levels of, you know, where you're at as far as in the entertainment industry itself. So, Absolutely. like, right now, like, what do you, now you're driving what? Yeah, I was going to say, for me, let's start with me because I don't have anything extravagant. Or <laughs> I just use my my daily driver. Uh, I have a 2018 Nissan Rogue. Okay. Which, for my basic setup, like, just... The tops, the subs, lights, your usual stuff, nothing extra like mm-hmm. trussing or anything. It's perfect. Okay, so it fits both your subs. Yes. That's it good because perfect. not every you know, not every car would fit subs. I mean yes. my first my first DJing car because it was a car, because I didn't have, let's say. Oh, I, yeah, you, you, you did mention this to me. I think it was it's either my Monte Carlo Super Sport 02 or it was my Mustang. And That's Mustang, crazy because both of those are two door, right? Yeah. So obviously you never got those were never sub jobs. No those were way. those were jobs with tops <laughs> only. But yeah, I had to fold down the back seat, and that's where the front board would fit perfectly. And then I mean everything was packed out, man. That's what I used to do when I had my Nissan Altima. Is just I had to slide everything into the back seat. Yeah. Like have my facade and the table on top, and uh, everything else would tr- try to squeeze into the trunk. But I made it work for years. Yeah, and and, so. and the first company that I used to run as a partner, uh, they had an Astro van, and I've seen a lot of those. They're very popular. You They're know, like a mid-size van. I have been looking at those, like just as a DJ mm-hmm. vehicle. It's definitely it definitely fits a lot of stuff, and you could definitely go into like that, that next category of you can hold more stuff in it. Right, um, and, and it's a passenger van. It's like it is a passenger. It's like van. a regular car. So, it is. Uh, you don't have to worry about the parkways or anything like that. The only thing is they don't make them anymore. Yeah. That's the difference with Astro Vans. They don't make them. Like, I currently... So, my fleet right now... That's such a cool word to say. I like that word. <laughs> my fleet. Well, actually, it's vehicles. really funny because the other day, uh, for some reason, I was at my girlfriend's and we were looking up personalized license plates. I don't know why, but we were. <laughs> that's and what we do in our so free we, time. So, we just, we just decided... I was just like, let me just check if, like... Enjoy is available. So, like, all of Enjoy was available. So, like, I was so tempted to get, like, Enjoy 1 through 5. I just, and then line them up and take the coolest Instagram picture you ever. You should. I'm thinking about you it. Should. I might do that because that would be really cool. And then I'm going to get pulled also, over one day and be like, mm, what is this Enjoy thing? What are we doing? <laughs> what are you enjoying here? in there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, but yeah. No, that so. would be cool because then you can keep track of, of the vehicles better. I won't lie, DJ Willie B is available. Very tempted. For license If plates? I was 18, I would have totally got it. <laughs> if I was 18, oh I would have gosh. totally gotten DJ Willie B. I bet you X-Toro is available. Yep, definitely. I definitely XT0 think- XT0 RO? I that is, nobody has that. That is definitely available. Don't take that. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> if I ever decide to get that. <laughs> so anyway, so right now in in the fleet, we have a two, 19, my, my favorite truck- my oldest truck and my, my favorite truck is my 1996 Dodge Ram 3500 van. So it is passenger, so it can go in all the parkways, and it it's awesome. I mean, the, the, it runs great. I actually when I when I had bought the truck, 
it had a lot. Of, it had some rust, but it was a one. It only had one owner. Only had ninety. Well, it had ninety one thousand miles. Wow. I got it for two thousand dollars. The guy actually called me the next day and was like, "I just want to let you know how lucky you are, because I had people offer me three grand for it. I bought it the same day it went on Craigslist. By the way, shout out Craigslist. <laughs> Not the killer, but the company. Like." Awesome, dude. I mean, so I bought sponsorships I, I, never hurt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I bought I bought that truck, and actually I had it wrapped in white. So that's why it looks brand it's new. It's wrapped, it's, really. That that truck is wrapped. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I was I was comparing having it painted, or having because with the paint they had to do a lot more work beforehand. It was going to be a lot more expensive. So I got the wrap job, and I have a seven year warranty on it. Wow. So that was a really cool thing I had. See, done. I I really enjoyed to drive the older ones. Like yeah, when I drove that, it, it was. Smooth ride, steering's nice and tight. The other really of room the, in the back. The other really awesome thing, I mean, especially being on Long Island, is for the most part, my trucks don't get miles. You know what I mean? Like you, you're only going yeah, everything twenty to thirty miles left or right, or you know, north or south. You're not really going, and it's only a couple days a week. It's not the whole week that these trucks are out. So just for instance, I've had the '96 for five years, and it has a hundred and one thousand miles. So I've put in ten thousand miles in in five years. That's impressive. Like, well, you also have multiple trucks. That does help, and it does help so it like massively. S- it spreads it and out that, a little bit. That also helps. So, so that's number one. My second truck that I bought was that the van. Yeah, I did. I, I'm trying to think Hard which to one it was. <laughs> Shut up! I know. Um, the second one I bought was my 2007. Um, that's that's my Ford E350. Another passenger van. That one's the, so that one's the 2007. So it was nicer. Just had a brand new paint job done. It actually came from the city. It was a. It took the police officers to court. Oh okay. Yeah. So I got it from a guy who did went to like police auctions. So I bought it. I actually bought it like five blocks from where I DJ now's commercial like headquarters is in Ronkonkoma. Oh wow. So that truck has been a godsend. You know, and the nice thing about with the with the passenger vans is again parkways you can go in parking garages you know i mean there's just so many well, benefits depending on the height but yeah, yeah depending on the height but primarily you know you can get in most things they might charge you more but you know with a box truck you know it's obviously which brings me into my my next two so third vehicle i got oh and i also got the van the second van off craigslist by the way found that guy on craigslist third vehicle also off craigslist um that was that's my 2005 chevy box truck and that thing, that thing was my real like needle in a haystack, man. It had fifty thousand miles on it. That's it. With the lift gate, and again, I bought it this the first day it was on Craigslist. I, I mean, bought it same day. The lift gate is a lifesaver when it comes to like flight cases and things so like that. So it's interesting. That's what I thought too. Then I got my fourth truck, which was the, which is my nineteen ninety eight diesel. Um, that's a Ford. That's a Ford too. That's my that's yeah. my Ford box truck. And that one's a sixteen footer. The that, other one's a fifteen. That thing's a beast. The thing is a beast. Pain in my ass sometimes because diesels are just they're more powerful and they're more efficient. But when they break, they like to break down, man. But uh, so that thing has the ramp, the pull out ramp, and I gotta tell you, man, I like the ramp so much better. Really, it's so much easier now. However, since we do inflatables and heavy stuff like that, the lift gate is very useful. However, it's also – so there's a couple different types of lift gates. The one we have is where it folds in front of the door. There are some that go underneath. Mm-hmm. I would really rather it go underneath because then I still have access to my door without having to put the lift gate down. Right. So there's a lot of times where I just need to go in there and get a bag and I have to take a lift gate and down. it's like a whole process. It's a whole process. Yeah. So however, when you're moving a 350-pound inflatable it's, it's all, or, or you know something heavy on wheels or the TV box or something like that, it's very, you know, but same thing. Like I said, with the ramp, you go right down it. You fly down it on wheels. Very, very easy, dude. Yeah. So I, I highly recommend. Um, and that, and that also depends on what you're moving, you know. So, the my number one choice as far as for everything we do, is the vans, because I mean, dude, it is better than Mary Poppins like purse. <laughs> the amount of things that I can yeah, fit in those so trucks. Yeah, space. Yeah. Uh, on the normal basic basis. Our regular setup, which would be, you know, the four speaker sound system, two TVs in the in the case, two trusses, 
and a full photo booth with up lights can all fit in that van. With extra space. With extra space. Yeah. And then if I need more stuff, I throw it in. So, and it's huge. The one thing you have to remember is that you need to keep a seat behind your driver's side or else you can get a ticket because then you're not technically a passenger right. vehicle anymore. Because if you take that out, then you're kind of, you know, taking a little bit of a risk there. Um, I also had added on the one van, the, the 07, I added a third seat in the middle called the jumper seat. So we have an yeah, extra. Yeah, I was going to say, you could always have a jump seat. Um, jumper seats are huge. They make one that fold folds down. Up. That's an awesome thing. So you thing. can use that space and then... Yeah, you just want to protect yourself. Worst comes to worst, if you get pulled over, a cop's giving you a hard time. Right. It folds down. You can say, no, I have the seat. You know, I really cool. only say go for the box truck if you really, really mm-hmm. need it. Um, you, For the most part, you can't park them in the street. As far as, you know, where you live or whatever, you know, you can park a van, uh, you know, by your house. That's fine. You know, I mean, if you have an office and you're parking, that's that's one thing. Then then go for it. Um, you know, you need commercial insurance. Um, DOT is a big issue. You need to, you know, you need to make sure you have the proper stuff written on the side of your trucks. It needs to say right. the G, you know, the gross, you know, weight and all that. Now, so, for that, um, you have to do that with the box trucks, but not necessarily the vans, right? The vans, you do not need to. Yeah, even if they're commercial. That's you, what I thought. You don't necessarily need to. Don't quote me on the on the commercial van. Um, basically, what makes them residential is you have to have windows right. on both sides. But that's what makes them like a passenger. Yeah, and you van. can even, I, I know guys in the industry who have taken a commercial van and turned it residential by having wi- windows put in. So um, I would never think to do that. Yeah, another another great one is the Ford Transit. That's an awesome, awesome one. The Dodge Sprinter is huge right now. Very another very big one. I do like the Transits very much. The uh, the newer ones. Mm-hmm. Um, my day job, I do like air duct cleaning, restoration work. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have two Ford Transits. I believe they're two fifties. Um, 2016, I believe, and they're awesome. They're yeah, com- man. They're comfortable. There's plenty of room. It's it's awesome. Yeah, because you know what, man? I mean, once you start doing these bigger events, I know a lot of guys rent trucks, and, you know, if you're not doing this full-time, that's the way to go, especially if, like, for instance, I don't take my box trucks over the bridges. I, I don't. It's just it's just not a personal preference. It's just a personal personal preference. I just I'd rather just I rent if I need to, which I don't normally ever have to. I think I've done it once is I would rent a box truck. I just rather take, you know, because you don't ever normally have problems with a rental. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just bad luck sometimes. I, that's how I think. It's you know, about for the, the mojo for you? Yeah, it's about the mojo, man. I mean, I, I, I baby all my trucks. My trucks get babied. I, I mean, hey, one of my trucks, though. That's how they last. This past weekend, actually, I had sent one of them, the 07 actually just got back. It's been doing a lot of work. I, I, have, to, I have to pamper that truck a little bit. Um, well, a month ago, it was in D.C. for work. And then this past weekend, it was in Pittsburgh. Jeez. Yeah, we had a um, an AV rental. We did a political debate. So we kind of, I like to kind of stretch out, and that's really where the commercial, you know, and the, you know, going into these different fields, we're doing. So we did live live feeds on the TVs. We did uplighting. We did trussing, and it looked sick. And it, it's just another interesting, you know, thing, and it's a different avenue of, of revenue. Yeah, I mean, there's there's all sorts of different things you could look into. As far as like AV, mm-hmm. uh, when you're in a mobile DJ business, absolutely. So other because you it, already have the sound, ex- yeah, you could just add most on. Most of it. you have the video, mm-hmm. you exactly. Know? So you just add on things. And now, is there a truck that you're looking at getting in the near future, or or one that you were thinking about that maybe you know you you want an opinion on or something like that? I mean, if money wasn't an issue, I would probably go for one of the new transits. Yeah, uh, I'd probably try to get the passenger one, mm-hmm. so I could. I almost bought a transit about a year and a half ago and it fell through I actually had a problem with a loan the bank screwed up messed up my credit a little bit they they said they didn't they weren't going to use my personal and they did and it was this oh, whole geez. big thing I ended up not getting it because unfortunately it's very difficult to get a loan on a vehicle that you're buying through Craigslist very difficult they want you to buy it through like a used auto lot or new right because most of the the dealers have like warranties and things like that. Yeah, and they just don't want to. Is they that probably why? Yeah, and they don't want to just give you the cash. You know, it's it's kind of silly, but I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a listen, loan. It's going on your credit, right? I mean, but it worked they, out. They shouldn't give you a hard time. But you would think not. That's just how it works. But I mean, it worked out because I ended up getting another box truck. So and then plus my, I have my 2014 Dodge Ram 1500, which goes out a lot. So I have five trucks right now. I am looking probably within the next year to add a sixth. 
Yeah. I'm probably I haven't decided whether it's going to be a van or it's going to be a box truck. Since you know we, we've really gotten into more of production, you know, and bigger stuff. I mean, I just ordered the other day. I just ordered a whole brand new two brand new sets of lounge furniture. So I mean, this stuff takes up massive amounts well, of room. You know, what's cool about the transits? They also have the extended roofs. Right. So. I forget the height, but... You have to just have to be careful, again, because if you want to keep it residential, you have to keep it under a certain length, uh, a certain height, so you don't hit the... Hit the hit yeah, no, I don't think... I think it's medium. Those are th- considered residential. Yeah, I think you. I think although, medium. Although I do see, um, like, the airport, like the shuttles, uh-huh. they have the ones with the, with, with the high ceilings mm-hmm. with the windows. So, so maybe I'm wrong. Considered residential. Yeah, they would definitely. I don't know. You just have to look res- into it. No, we it's, have to. Yeah, it's different in in every state, I think. But it's definitely a cool thing, though. I mean, these trucks, man. I mean, they they do make life a lot easier, you know. And I mean, and I definitely recommend uh, if you're buying an older vehicle like my '96 uh, and all that. I, I I we haven't actually mentioned this on the show, but uh, probably I would say about four months ago, one of my trucks was actually robbed. And actually, that's a whole other, other um, day I want to talk about, you know, how to prepare for, unfortunately, untimely things like that. Yeah, how to protect but, um, yourself and You your know, equipment. that that truck, unfortunately, didn't was a manual truck, so it did um, not manual as far as driving, but it had manual locks. So, it, one of the guys must have accidentally forgot to open a lock, or, you know, it looked like someone picked the lock, unfortunately. So, you know, things were stolen. However, since then... You know, there's been a fully brand new alarm system put in that's louder than hell. That and thing I have scared the yeah, crud out of I me. I remember I didn't tell you the first day you took the truck, and oh boy, that was a good time. I took um, it to, um, I think it was LIU here. Yeah, I think you took and, it here. Um, <laughs> we were doing a thing in the Pratt, and I walked away. Like, I was about to come back, but I just walked something in, and I hear, woo, woo, yes, woo, like uh, really loud. And I'm like, I'm looking at Nick. I'm like, uh... Yeah, what happened here? Was that me? <laughs> the other awesome thing name? you can add on, and you should put this on all your doors, is the big bolt locks. Yeah. They're very and inexpensive we to do. The hockey puck. Hockey puck locks. locks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly you what they really look like. really should put those on. I mean, someone really needs to want to get in your truck. I'm pretty you know? sure you could put those on, like, regular vehicles, too. Yeah. Like you a can put it on any, Yeah, you could put it on anything you want. Yeah. Uh, minivans are also a great idea, man. I know a lot of people use the minivans for photo booths. Those are oh, really big. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're very inexpensive. You know, you can get, like, an O2, O3, you know, something like that. And, and you know, it's like a step up from a car or, like, a, you know, like a, a crossover. But it's also not, you know, and you could drive a minivan, like, every day if you really Anywhere. wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean yeah. You don't really want to drive a white van everywhere <laughs> I, I like to keep yeah. all my trucks white I just think it looks clean matches my speakers exactly. you know like, like that type of stuff it, um, it's also like a businessy thing you just yeah everything should just be clean when you pull up they're like oh this must be the DJ yeah I do know however um, some of the guys in the industry that have really cool designs um, who did I see the other day maybe it was Party Hardy it might have been don't quote me on that but his box truck he has it he had wrapped and it's wrapped to look like a flight case. That's cool. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that and before. it's really cool. And I give them credit for that because that was really nifty. Like, I have my box trucks wrapped, but it's wrapped just in white. And then it has all of our different, you know, all of our different services, our phone number, and all that fun stuff. But, yeah, I thought that was such That's a cool, so cool thing. Yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool – it looked like a giant fl- – and I wanted to open it. <laughs> <laughs> What's in this flight case? <laughs> exactly. But it was a, That's it, so it's cool. a very cool thing. And that's the other cool thing when you get – you know, unfortunately, if you get a residential van or a minivan, you can't wrap it because right. then it becomes commercial. Exactly. So, I mean, it kind of, you know, dilutes the point I mean, you could wrap it, it a certain color. You just can't put, like, your, You're, You can just can't put writing name on or it. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, you could – yeah, you could wrap whatever you wanted to. But um, you wouldn't be able to put any lettering on it. You can right. get magnets, though. You can do magnets if you take them over yeah, the, the parkway. Yeah, the door magnets. Some yeah. people do that as well. These are all just great starter options. You know, if you're going to, you know, say, hey, I'm going to start looking, you know, to do the next level. I've seen this a lot happen where people want to start adding TVs mm-hmm. or they want to add a photo booth. You know what I mean? Because then, you know, you kind of need that extra room. Well, see, for me, that's what I said before. Like, if... If money wasn't an issue, yes, I would go for the transit or something like that. But, you know, I'm not a huge company. I'm not mm-hmm. bringing in that much revenue. So the more affordable option would probably be a minivan. Yeah, I agree and, with you. Um, yeah. And now you, you, could you always have get two the ramps vehicles right now it. too, right? Yeah, the other one is just like a like a beater. I just 
put miles on it. Yeah, but that's smart, though, man. You're saving the vehicles. Infinity I-30. Yeah, you're saving the miles doing your other one, so that's fine. If I get a van, I'll probably get rid of the Infinity because there's no reason to have three cars, just for me, but... Yeah, um, especially if one's not your Sunday car. Exactly. Yeah, you got to get a Sunday car. Everyone needs a Sunday <laughs> Everyone car, Everyone needs man. a Sunday car. <laughs> but yeah, the minivans uh, are pretty cool. I like the Dodge Grand Caravans. Grand Caravan. Grand Caravan. Grand Caravan. Caravans are nice, you know, and they, they definitely, you know, you get your bang for your buck as far as the space goes. The newer ones are cool, too. They're also good, and, even if you have a whole have the fleet. doors that open automatically. Those are yeah. very helpful. Even, like, I actually looked at getting one of them because, you know, even... You know, if I don't want to send out one of the vans and then just have something very small going, like a movie night with a popcorn machine, exactly, and it won't you fit one of my like guys' a huge, cars, a huge box truck or something I could, like that. You know, that. I could send this smaller vehicle, and they're also, like I said, not that expensive. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just you have to equate whether it's worth it because then you have to put like my my issue has always been where I've looked at getting a minivan or something like that, but then I just went with the van because it's like, well, if I'm going to pay X amount of insurance and all this stuff, yeah, if you're why wouldn't I just get the extra room and you're in a stab- yeah, but again, another business, thing you know you people have. don't have is you know parking. Parking is a huge issue, man. I mean, a commercial box truck um, parking space is only about two hundred dollars a month. I remember we had the box truck in Queens once, mm-hmm. and we had to park on the street, but there was no parking. It was such, it, it was a pain. Ironically, in the, the city's the probably one of the best places to find parking for because they actually have the commercial vehicle lane, which right. is is right. nice. But, but then if there's no spots, you can't go in the garage. Yeah, I, I, well, you can. You just won't have a roof left. <laughs> There's pros and cons. We're going to figure it all everything. out, baby. But where can they find us real quick, Ant? All right. You can go to our website, QPointsPodcast.com, or Instagram and Facebook at QPointsPodcast. That's what I'm talking about, man. We're going to be back in just a few every Wednesday here at noon. And tonight, where are we going to be? I DJ Now. We are hosting the I DJ Now QSC giveaway. We hope to see you there right there on Sunrise Highway in Babylon. We'll be back right after this. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Will from the Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast, and we would love to get your opinion and your take on the DJ world in today's day and age and how much it's changed and everything going on and having to do with the mobile DJ universe. Give us an email at QPointsPodcast at gmail.com, and let's get you involved in the conversation. Again, that's QPointsPodcast at gmail.com. We'll speak to you soon. If you're enjoying the Q Points Mobile DJ Podcast, then you got to give us a follow. Find us on Instagram and Facebook at Q Points Podcast for giveaways, product reviews, and so much more. That's Q Points Podcast on all social media platforms. Check us out. Welcome back to Q Points, the Mobile DJ Podcast. I'm Anthony. This is Will. What's up, man? Not much. We were just talking a little bit about... A lot of things. Yeah, we were we were cutting it. We got we got cut off a little bit, but um, yeah. First of all, we we were talking about parking, and uh, yeah. So a big thing, you know, you buy a box truck. You, for the most part, a lot of places you'll get ticketed for leaving in the street at your house or something like that. Yeah, even at your house. Yeah, I, I got a nice ticket there, one day. I, I just came home that, for the yeah. night. Like I got home really late, and by the morning I had a three hundred and fifty dollar ticket. Yeah. Wow, they yeah. got you. I, I usually put it in my parking in my driveway, and I just forgot that night. So I luckily keep mine at my warehouse, so I'm good. My mom had mentioned something about how you're not even allowed to have them in your in your driveway. It depends. If you're in a village, then normally there'll be laws against that. That okay. is true. But if you're not in a village, like I'm in the town of Babylon, there's no law against that. I I know plenty of people that have them. It's kind of a, I, I mean, there's I get why they're doing it. They want to keep the look of the houses not industrial. Right. However, you know, you're kind of screwing any business owner. Yeah, which a lot is of people like, like work out of their houses. But then again, we are so. in New York, and New York's number one goal is to screw entrepreneurs <laughs> and, and any small true. business, dude. It's like, oh, true. you made an extra, you made an extra money this year. We're gonna take that real quick from you, yeah. dude. It's just, it's just crazy, Definitely. man. That's a whole, that's a whole show in itself. Is just being in business in, you know, two of the most expensive counties in the country, dude. Like. And then, you know, I mean, there's pros and cons to it again. I mean, there are other states that, you know, mobile DJing is a thing, but they're far and in between. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't make money in this industry like you can here. It just doesn't happen. It just, no one's having 5000 to $10,000 first birthdays. Like, no one's doing that. Yeah. They're in their backyard making burgers and enjoying I went to a exactly. I went to a wedding in Virginia and um, they didn't ask me to DJ which I was happy about I wanted to just go and enjoy it and 
I was just so shocked. We got there, and the DJ, no, not even speaker stands, man. Two tops on the floor. That was it. And he had, like, old analog mixer and, like, a wired microphone. It must have been, like, a family friend not or something. E- no, no. This was, this was, like, a DJ company. Oh, my goodness. And he didn't even have a front board. And it was just, like... And it was interesting, and I guess it also goes with the traditions down there. Like the bra, the groom's family, who was from you know the area, they left like right after dinner. They were gone. So the only people partying at the end of the party were like the New Yorkers, and like we were asking wow. for very generic songs like Don Zacadoro, and like didn't have it. Really? Like didn't have it, and wow. it was just like it was just like come on, man! Like you kidding me? So it's amazing how different it is. I mean, I've seen a lot of companies that are successful in uh, one in sp- one specifically. I know in like Ohio, I know of obviously Jersey, Pennsylvania, you know New York, Connecticut. That's really the hub. Um, I'm sure Florida, you know, you would do well in, and then you have California. Right. But I mean, I really can't see, you know, and I'm not an expert on, you know, the different no, I geographies know f- of it. For sure, there are. Mobile DJ companies all across the U.S. Oh yeah, I'm sure there are every state, but it doesn't mean they're doing um, the volume or the price. The tag. The volume in New York is ridiculous. Yeah. compared to everybody, and else. the price tag as well. I mean, I'm pretty sure most other places, no, no one's upgrading their speaker system for white speakers. You know what I mean? It's just like all these little things that, like, I'm sure yeah. you know. It's like. You know, it, it's the whole saying, like, uh, you got to have the biggest boat on the block. Like, it's like that. Pretty and that's much. New York. <laughs> and you know what? Are that's we also, why. we sort of make the entertainment industry sort of like like show business. Dude, we're the Coachella. Like, we try to make your wedding into the most extravagant thing it could possibly be. Yeah. And like you said, down south, it's not really. It's not like that, man. It's, it's not it's, their main goal. It's backyard hoedowns, baby. Yeah, and that's fine for them. I like that so much better. <laughs> I mean, I would personally prefer that too dude it's so it's but, so fun you know so here you fun. have to have the big huge wedding yeah. with the big huge this and that and yeah. drapes and yeah man it, it's listen it's, i mean it makes me money notch. so i can't complain about it but, you know this is what we do this but, yeah. is our industry but that's <laughs> but i have to fit all this crap that's into a truck and yeah. so you know and as far as you know going back to the you know the truck so obviously parking is an issue i mean so that's why a pro especially if you're on the you know lower spectrum of you know how many events you're doing and everything vans and minivans are a great idea because you could put them on the street you could put them in your driveway you don't need a different place to put them right so that's one thing you also need commercial insurance so you don't need to worry about that either um but now you know you want to go into uh, what's inside the vehicle you know there's a lot of great ways that you can optimize your space yes, you know bungee absolutely. cords uh, the D links, which are, I'm not sure if everyone's um, knows about, but they're really they're like these metal locking mechanisms that lock into this um, pad that goes along the walls. Yeah, and on on one end of the clip it has like a hook that goes in right. first, and on the top there's a little pin that you push down. Right, it locks in, and then usually on those there's like a ratchet strap. Yep, or it's a ratchet strap, and, you, and then you put it the to the other it. side. Right, and it, they're really really useful. Those are useful for the box trucks and some vans. Yeah, I've seen them a lot in vans as yeah. well. They're really great uh and they even make where you could put them on both sides of the vehicle and then you could put like a bar across or, right. or you could put a strap across yeah. which could separate you know especially if you're moving big things you don't want them moving at all yeah like flight cases exactly it's easy to have them all in one spot you know lock the wheels put the bar up they're not going anywhere exactly so that's another great idea um like i said bungee cords always always really good um when you get into the bigger trucks like the box trucks and everything like that then you know shelving is huge uh, I have lights in all mine, so LED lighting is great. Uh, even, I mean, dude, honestly, even on a van, even if you have windows or you don't have windows, dude, backup cameras. You know, I know you've driven the truck with the backup camera. I mean, it makes life makes so much a easier. It's a lot difference. safer, you know, and I actually have mine, you know, um, wired, so they're always on, not just when you're in reverse. So you right. always know what's behind you. You know, you just never know, man. It's very it, useful. You know, it's so... People don't listen. Everyone's on their phone twenty four seven now. You know, people aren't paying attention. It's so easy for someone to you know just walk behind you and you not know. You know exactly. Some trucks, and you know, you can get the beat put on it, which is good, except you know it's very loud. So it has again another thing with pros and cons. Yeah. But that's another great idea. And if you're installing your own backup camera, always make sure to put it in the middle. Yeah. Because I've seen it like sometimes on one side or something like that. But if it's in the middle and you're backing into a spot. 
it's easy to just line the lines up. Well, yeah, I, I don't understand why people would not put it in the middle. I mean, it doesn't really make sense. I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to do? But yeah, though, the I think I think usually it's just because like they don't know where to mount it. Or it's also like, easier no... to run the wires. Right. You know, R- running the wires or mounting the. That's... Running the wires is kind of a pain in the ass. I mean, especially if you you know you have to have the right tools. You also have to know what you're doing. I mean, but that's the thing about like owning your own business yeah because basically you have to take the door apart to run the wires through yeah but no but the cool thing about you know doing this and owning your own business is it's just all these little things like you can teach yourself yeah like handyman things yeah you learn things man I mean I didn't you know you know was one years old and I was like I could put a you know backup camera in (laughs) you know I had to teach myself but you know now I can do it and it's like easy for that all yeah, the t- tutorials and everything. Dude, t- YouTube is huge. That's I how mean, I learn people everything. have learned the craziest things, and they're like, "Oh, I taught myself off YouTube," yeah. and it's just so awesome. I mean, yeah, you have all your videos and your vlogs. Have you made any like uh, how to DJ vlogs? Uh, I have been asked to do tutorials and mm-hmm. stuff like that, and I thought about it. Um, maybe doing like a series or um, like a Patreon type thing where you have to sign up for it. But, uh, subscribe to XToro. <laughs> exactly. And where could they find you on YouTube? Anthony Garcia DJ. Vlogs. They got to find the show on there? Yes. You bet your ass they are. You bet when does it come out? Booty. Every Wednesday at noon. Hey, man, listen. I'm putting ass on the table. It's loud now. <laughs> I'm not putting my ass on the table, but I'm putting ass on the table. <laughs> it's no loud on the show. On the table. <laughs> they can see Liz, that. Liz, if you're listening to this, there's no booties on the table. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. We went there. Liz is my girlfriend, just so you guys know. <laughs> well, who else would it be? <laughs> All right. I had to throw that out there. Anyway, where are we going to be tonight? That's more important. I DJ now in Babylon for the QSC giveaway. Let's make sure it's the Babylon one. We're not going to be in Queens. Sunrise. Don't come to Queens to see us. If you did, that was sweet of you, but we won't be there. (laughs) So, yeah, we're going to be in Babylon. It's an all day event. I think it's going from three to nine. You know, really five to seven o'clock. It's really going to be packed out. They're going to have QSC. Um, different tutorials going on, different, you they know. They'll have like live DJs. They're going to have live DJs. To demo the speakers too. One of the DJs coming is, I think he was on tour with Nicki Minaj. Don't quote me on that, oh, but I'm wow. pretty sure, you know, there's some really cool people that are going to be there. We'll be there and we're actually going to be doing live interviews with uh, different, you know, all, all different DJs that are there, you know, guys from QSC, you know, the DJs that they're that are coming into spin. Yeah, we're guys actually, from DJ uh, now. We're lucky enough to be actually hosting the event. Yeah, we're so gonna be hosting the event, so it should be that's pretty cool. It's gonna be awesome, man. I'm really excited and I'm really excited to get feedback from, you know, people that have heard the show. Because there's gonna be a lot of people there that are the people listening to the show? So I'm re- I'm really looking forward to seeing what what they have to say and getting you know their opinions on the DJ world and you know what, what's going on and you know if we're hitting the right spots that I think we are. But you know it's always great to have other opinions and you know in business in life and in, on the show you got to take criticism. You know, if you know, I I would love All it. If, I would life. love it if tonight, you know, someone comes up and says, "Man, you know, the show's cool, but like, you really should talk about this." Like, thank you, man. Like, that's yeah, what that I want to hear. Like, like, we know what we want to talk about and what we think you guys want to hear. Right. These are the experiences but we've had. But what, that's why we put the forum on the website. We want to hear from you guys. We we need. Yeah, that, tell that, them how to find that that input. So you go to cuepointspodcast on the top navigation bar. You'll see the forum button, mm-hmm. and right next to that, you'll see the members. Where you can actually sign up and be a member of the website, and uh, and it's free. Yep, free. free. I mean, if you want to donate, you don't have to donate anything. <laughs> don't worry. It's not like the, yeah, you could like it's not the museum. Log in, you can talk on the forum. Uh, you'll know whenever we upload anything. So, I like that, man. Yeah. I, I think it's good to get everyone try to get everyone involved. And dude, it should be packed out. I mean, I th- I know that you know on Facebook alone, there's over like a hundred and pe- hundred fifty people saying that they're going. I saw in the thousands. Did it? All right. So thousands. I guess maybe, I haven't checked. Maybe that was interested. I know for a fact there's like 150 to 200 people that I know for a fact are going. So, I mean, so, this place I is going to be crowded. Yeah, it's not a huge place. <laughs> yeah, there's usually like so, a solid like, you know, 15, 20 people in there Throughout the day, it's definitely to be packed. Oh, yeah, but man. what they wanted us to say, you do have to be present to win. Yeah, so you can't just show up at 3 o'clock and leave at 4 o'clock and think you're going to win. Exactly. You know, that's not how it works. But there's going to be over $8,000 worth of equipment given away from QSC. It's the brand new QSC setup. I think it's also the, the mixer that QSC just came out with. Yeah, so it's like the touch mix. The touch mix, like yep. There's going to be one of those. So, I mean, the, I mean, it's awesome. And also, it's just a fun night to come out and, you know, Meet see other, other DJs, DJs and everything, you know, without having to go to the expo. 
right. you know, in August. And then you get to check out the store anyway. You know, they have the lighting section. Yeah, if you haven't been to the store, you know, and I know we've done a show on it, we've talked about it a lot, but the, sh- the store is is really a useful place for ideas. You know, maybe it's not something you, you know, I'm in there all the time and I just spend money because it, I wasn't even thinking about something. And I was that's, like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll add that, you know. Yeah, but that's where I learn a lot about the equipment, you know, because you can look it up online, but there's nothing like being able to see it. Right. And f- feel it. And no, exactly. And and there, again, there's just, there's a lot of little things that you can't get other places on the fly. Like the other day I opened up one of my trussing bags, you know, that goes out with the TVs. And we were missing like four of the pins for the bottom of the TV so that, you know, people don't knock over our televisions and the trussing and the moving heads. You know, you can't just walk into Target and go get what you need. You can't even go to Home Depot. <laughs> May I get, have trust pins, please? Yeah, you can't even go to Home Depot. <laughs> no one just or carries Lowe's. them, yeah. However, you can go to IDJ now and like for 20 bucks or $25, whatever it is, you get a nice bag of them. You know what I mean? Like, that's not yeah. something you can get. You can order off Amazon and it might take a day or two. But when you're in a jam, you know, they're, they're going to be the ones to go to. Right. And they're going to be the ones to go to for a lot of other things as well. Right. So, And we do love IDJ now. We are advocates of them. But We uh, are, really? I couldn't tell by the show. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. If yeah. you're not in New York, there are a bunch of other stores like that. And uh, all, but they also ship worldwide. Don't yes, forget about that. Yes, they have a huge yes, online do. presence. And, you know, and there's not a lot of stores that are just mobile, really, for the mobile DJ and everything like that. So right. if you can't go into the store physically... You know, they have, and right on when you go on the website, there's live chat support too, which is cool. So you can, you know, you can talk to them. I really like that. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's awesome. Usually, if I'm thinking about going in or, you know, and I'm not sure about something, I'll jump on the chat real quick and be like, hey, do you guys have this? Right, and they'll check. Would I be able to do this with that? And they'll be like, yes, you could do that. Why don't you come on in? We'll have it ready for you at the counter. So, sounds like with all this equipment you're going to be buying, you're going to definitely need this bigger truck, man. Mm hmm. I think you should get it. I want to get it. I, I, I think, you know what also we'll do, uh, and I found this out as well throughout the years, it's like when you when you bite the bullet and you spend the money, it makes you make more money. Not because it can hold more equipment or anything, because now you have like this drive. Right, because it's now like, you crap, know I need that, to fill this truck with equipment. You know equipment that you've the, invested, right. so now you need to make the most of that investment. Yeah, and it happens all the time. Like the other day, you know, I was looking, I was kind of wishy-washy if I wanted to buy a new inflatable obstacle course. It's like 65 feet long. Those things are awesome. Things are awesome. <laughs> but it's like, and I Don't do ask it, me because I'll say yes. 100%. And I do a decent amount of them, but it was like, I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna do it. I'm going to get it. Let me see what I could sell this week on it. And I was able to sell it two times. And then I already paid for like 40% of it. So it's just, you know, you got to put your mind to it, you know, and, and we talked about sales, we talked about, you know, packages and everything, but you just got to, you know, it's very hard for me to sell something that I don't own. So I just buy everything. You know, I don't really, I, it's very rare for me to rent things. I've tried to get wiser with it because there have been things that, you know, haven't, paid off the way I wanted them to you know it used to when I first started I said okay I want to give myself if I buy something let's say I spend two thousand dollars and I buy something I want it to pay itself off within a year now I want to pay itself off within a season because you know that that it doesn't make it doesn't make more yeah it doesn't make sense for a whole year to have to take up the amount of space make the initial investment if it's going to take an entire 365 days when you make a big investment like that the ultimate goal is to get your money back that you invested asap and and then then tenfold right and then make room for more money for more profit dude i have all the room in the world for money (laughs) i have i I, i'll buy basements i'll buy i'll buy storage containers we'll put all the money all the money man and, and that's the same thing. It's like, you know, it's storage. You know, it goes hand in hand with the parking. It's like, you know, sometimes you got to bite the bullet. You know, you also don't want to, if you, let's say, you keep everything in your house, right? Mm-hmm. If it's taking up room and it's having like a negative aura for it, and I don't even know if I believe in that stuff, but like, it's just like bad, uh, what is it, juju? Is that what it's called? Mojo. Mojo, yeah, <laughs> juju, whatever it is. Mojo, Yeah, Jojo. man, if it's like, it's always in the way and everything, like sometimes you have to have an escape. You right. know, work and, and home should be different. A lot of people that work out of their house or like have their equipment at their house, sometimes they'll go into uh, storage units. Mm-hmm. They're not that expensive. Yeah. It's a decent amount of space. I mean, yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful with you know. Definitely, the bigger ones are much much better, you know. And also, you know, unfortunately, with you know the stuff we want, we have it's heavy. You know, it takes a lot of room. You really need to try to get like a mean level unit, 
you know, when I when I first started, I had two U-Haul units, and they were garage doors. So you actually backed right up. Oh, that's awesome. They were expensive, though. You know, they were a lot of money for, and it was only ten by ten. It was a hundred square feet. It was smaller than this room. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, think about it, this room. It looks like it could hold a lot of equipment, but can it though? You know, when it starts getting big stuff. Well, it depends on what you have. Yeah. Exactly. If if it's you know speakers, that's easy. Right. But, but if now it's add TV, and, TV trussing, and yeah. TV cases and stuff like that. It adds it, up real quick. It gets bulky. It gets very, very bulky. So it's just, like I said, and the detached garages are awesome. You know, I'm currently looking at houses, and that's one thing I'm looking at. Even though I have the warehouse and everything like that, I, I would like to be able to keep some of the stuff at my house. Plus, I need a workshop. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? I need, a, I need a separate workshop that's not attached to the house. I need to be able to go in there, have a beer, yeah, blast music. The man cave. <laughs> no, nah, man, that's separate. I want a man cave in the house. I want a bowling alley. That's like my major Me thing. Me too. Yeah, but they're like... So much money, man. I've been wanting to put a nightclub in my house. I want a bowling alley. Right? I literally like, looked it up, too. It's like 200 like, grand for two lanes fully installed. That's that's awesome. It's also very expensive, but yes, but it'll, I'm going to do it. It'll pay off. Yeah, man. I'm going to charge my friends, and then I'm going to charge like charge $7 for in? shoes. <laughs> like Everyone's going to have to pay for have shoes. like shoe racks. <laughs> when you buy it, and this has nothing to do with the show, but when you buy the whole package, it comes with all the balls. It comes with all the different size shoes really? for you. Dude, you could open up your own bowling alley. Enjoyable bowling. It'll be, it, it'll be the newest sector of the company. I like it. But uh, yeah, man. No, it's just I'm excited for tonight. I'm excited for you know things to come. Like I said, yes, I want to add exciting. another truck. I want you to add a truck because then I don't have to give you a truck when I have big events. I want to add a truck. Yes, <laughs> you will. And it'll, dude, and then just so you like, know, even if it's a minivan or something, it's more space than what I have now. And just and I can do flight cases. And just so everyone knows out there, the minute you buy the van or any type of bigger vehicle. You will become the person who helps all your friends move. Oh yeah, I can tell you that from fact because I've moved probably twenty people because they all call me like, even if hey, you just man, have a pickup truck. Hey man, I I gotta move a refrigerator. Can you bring one of the trucks over? Or I'm moving today. Can you help me? Happens all the time. Exactly. So you know, man, listen, I I, I like to do nice things for people. So I have if a I'm friend around, that, uh, I do it. That just got into a new apartment mm-hmm. and he bought a TV and he's got this little Honda Civic. It was like a 65-inch TV. Yeah, he ain't fitting in that in there. And he went to load it in, and he's like, well, this isn't going to work. So he knows I have the Rogue. He called me. So even if you just have, like, a larger vehicle, your friends are I don't mind always... helping people out as long as I can. You know, don't call me, like, July 4th weekend and be like, hey, man, <laughs> I got to move, like, an entire house. Can you give me a hand? I don't mind, man. You know, m- moving stuff is what we kind of do for a living. We could pick houses up. You know, the... <laughs> we should pick them up over my head. <laughs> but, dude, you know, I don't know if you've ever done this. I want to just say this quick because I do it all the time. I get to an event and I just like I look at all I look at the whole truck and then I look at after it's set up. I'm like, I wonder how many times I've actually set this up. I wish I got like a little t- a little like ticker in the truck and every time it's set up like I hit a little ding and it's like another one. I mean, I can't imagine how many times I do think about that. we've set up and broken down. Yeah. You know, it's like it's almost like the theory of like uh insanity. It's like doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we do. Think about it. We, just, we, we take our crap, we set it up somewhere, and we put it away. And then we and then we set it up again. We have to pull it out, load it up. Never-ending cycle. I, 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 a lot of times, joking around when I do these networking events and stuff like that, you know, people say, hey, what's my slogan? I just tell people, I'm like, if it takes up a lot of room, I probably own it. <laughs> you know, that's just what it is, man. I like that. It's just true. It's just these things are just getting bigger and bigger and taking more and more room. And, you know, you need the vans, you know. And this, and like I said, there's we talked about in the beginning, there's different levels. You know, if you're looking for something on the smaller side, you know, you but you want to go bigger than like a little SUV, you know, maybe you want to go into – you know, like either a minivan or you want to go into like an Astro van, something that's like a moderate sized van. Yep. Then you can get into your full size vans. Then you have the Sprinters, you have the Transits, the Pro Masters from Dodge, which are really nice as well. Uh, and they yeah. do great rates on them. You know, you could lease them, you could buy them. I see them. a lot of those on the road. They're really, they're really nice. But really quick, where can they find us other than tonight at DJ Now? <laughs> I like how you put that in there. You like that, right? QPointspodcast.com. All of our episodes get uploaded there. They can also find us at Apple, Apple, uh, Apple, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Podcasts, Spotify, uh, a couple others, uh, Radio Cast, I believe it's called. Yeah, I think so as well, you, yeah. You can find all the links for those on our website. And then, of course, you have our social media, Instagram Yeah, go to Instagram and Facebook. And Facebook and at then Two Points Podcast. Podcast, baby. Every single Wednesday, we are here. 
at noon to talk about all the fun stuff going on. All and your favorite mobile DJ topics. Yeah, man. We, we got everything coming up, and I'm excited. We got some really awesome guests coming on the next couple weeks, which is going to be really fun. A lot more events coming up that we're going to be a part of. And, you know, who knows, man? I'm just excited for another busy yeah, you season. you guys might see us at, at the next networking event. Yeah, who knows, man? Hey, you know, know. We, we got a lot of awesome things coming out. I know you're going to the Expo in August. I'm going to yep. try to go. Yep. We'll see what happens there. But, man, I'm so excited. We will see you guys again. Next Wednesday. Yeah, baby.